I'm going to present you part of my thesis work. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, which I'm doing with the Museum of the Porridge Territory, and in particular with Gaetano Bencic, who is in charge of the territory. Uh, to say a few words, my research focuses on the dynamics of occupation and exploitation of the coastal territory of the Istrian colony of Parentium uh, in the northwest of Croatia. Its aim uh, will be to gain a better understanding of certain aspects of the economic history of this colonial territory, such as the evolution of land use strategies. Uh, and so let's continue with some historical background information. Following the deduction of the colonies of Parentium and Pola in the mid-first century before Christ, the landscape of the Istrian peninsula was transformed by an intensive romanization. This was mainly characterized by the establishment of large agricultural and residential estates and the development of speculative agriculture focused on oil production for export. Ranging from small farms to large villae, more than 300 ancient settlements are known on the territory of both colonies thanks to the studies of Robert Matiasic and Lava Bulic. In addition, the agricultural era of both colonies have been shaped by a vast land surveying operation. The, green, the Roman green covers both the area of Pola, whose boundary is at the Limsky Canal, and that of Parancham between the Limsky Canal and the Myrna Valley. So the total surface area of the Pertica, meaning the part of the territory that is divided by this grid, is of 1,200 kilometers squared. Uh, the Istrian centralization was recognized in the 19th century by Pietro Kondler and gradually defined by the work of several researchers. Uh, its chronology is logically linked by all to the deduction of the two colonies of Pola and Parentium in the mid-first century before Christ. Also, previous studies have shown that it has been set up using a classical module of 20 per 20 actus, corresponding to around 700 meters long for each century, and that the azimuth of the cardo is 18 degrees. Recent works using landscape archaeology concepts, computer processing tools and satellite imagery and laser data interpretation have provided new information on how it is set up and organized. These new sources of data and new tools are enabling us to revisit questions relating to the organization of the rural occupation in close connection with the distribution of settlements and the exploitation of natural resources. And so the aim of this presentation is to describe the first results of the analysis of the leader data acquired on the territory of the Tava Briga municipality with a focus on the study on the of the Roman cadastral system and the communication infrastructures. Um, before going further, I would like to give you some information about how the LIDAR data I'm working on and how it is processed. Uh, the municipality acquired the LIDAR data in 2018. Uh, the acquisition produced by the company Vectra covers an area of 31 kilometers squares corresponding to the territory of the municipality, plus a small additional area near the Bay of Busuya on the territory of Porridge, where the remains of a Roman villa were known. Uh, the company responsible for the acquisition carried out all, all the pre-processing and classification steps, and I was then responsible for examining the quality of the data. Uh, for that, I carried out analysis by 10 meters grid and looked at the density of ground ponds and the percentage of surface coverage. The first analysis was used to locate sectors where measurements related to the terrain are insufficient or non-existent, and the second to check the homogeneity or heterogeneity of the distribution of points, and therefore the interpolation rate of the digital terrain model. Uh, the analysis show that all the areas without data, which represent less than 1% of the acquisition, correspond almost exclusively to water surfaces or build-up areas. Uh, apart from these particular areas, only a 200 meters 
square zone, which corresponds to very dense wood with low vegetation, has no ground Um I was then in charge of generating the digital terrain model and the different visualizations. For the DTM, after the filtering steps, the result was an average of 17 ground pounds per meter square and uh, allowing to generate a DTM with a resolution of 25 centimeters. The various visualization derived from the DTM are generating using the relief visualization toolbox. You have the reference here. And I have produced the most common visualization that we use, like hill shading, sky view factor, slope, local radius model, positive openness, and also the visualization for archaeological topography. Uh, but some of them, like the slope, for example, are also generate visualizations with a DTM result at one meter in order to minimize the noise produced by the low vegetation. Um, this LIDAR data are of major interest for the knowledge of the ancient territory of Parentium. Firstly, the territory of the municipality of Tauraburga has seen a significant continuity of settlement from prehistoric times to the Middle Ages, and numerous archaeological sites are known to exist. Secondly, the data covers an area that is lar largely forested and is therefore, particularly from the point of view of the centuryation, still less documented. However, this area is probably close to the starting point of the Centuriation, recently located by Davo Bulic, not far from the center of the present-day town of Porridge. The acquisition also covers the limit of the colony's territory on the border with the colony of Tergest, funded at the same time. It also includes the north bank of the Myrna, a river that was a favorite route for entering the interior of the Istrian Peninsula. And this function is highlighted by the large number of prehistoric castellieri and Roman sites on both sides of East Coast. As expected, uh, the interpretation of leader data from Tava Briga has revealed numerous structures belonging to the Istrian Centuriation, some of which have not yet been identified. These structures may correspond to main limites, that means the boundary between each century, and to internal subdivisions of the centuries. For the moment, approximately 11,000 meters of structures could correspond to the main axis of the Roman catastrophe system, and around 12,000 meters to its subdivisions. Uh, it is interesting to note that although one of the characteristics of the Istrian Centuriation is its materialization in the form of tri stone walls. A map of the form taken by the sections detected in my study era shows that it is fossilized in the landscape in a wide variety of forms. The majority of these lineaments surveyed correspond to banks for 139 traces and earth banks for 70 traces. And the other forms, like depression, double earth bank, or leveling ground, are represented by only 15 or 20 entities each. And only 15 of these structures, out of a total of 262, for the moment, are associated with current low dry stone walls. But I must mention here the work I had out by Sarah Popovic in the Tsar Orsera sector which, based on the interpretation of LIDA data and archaeological excavations, demonstrate that the original Roman limites could be marked by linear dry stone features. Some examples of Tarabriga can also be used to initiate a discussion on the evolution of the centuryation and the use of the land by comparing LIDA data with the current environmental context. In this first example, we see a double earth bank, which compared with the theoretical grid of the Roman catastrophic system, corresponds to limites of the centuryation. This boundary is also still active as it corresponds to a current parcel boundary according to the digital catastrophe map. On the field, the two linear earth banks were slightly perceptible. 
the eastern one was a little bit more visible because small piles of stone punctuated its course. This could be interpreted as stone piles and may therefore suggest that a built structure such as a dry stone wall was associated with this section of the centuration at what time and that it had been then distoned as part of an agricultural activity. The leader data also shows a series of shallow lineaments running parallel to each other. This series of anomalies can be interpreted as ancient agricultural traces and in particular plugging floors. Although this parcel is completely wooded, it is highly likely that it was one cultivated. Uh, the second example I'm going to show you concerns one of the new centuriation sections detected on the promontory of the. This limit is takes the form of an earth bank that divides the promontory into two and can be observed over a distance of 280 meters. Several funerary and votive inscriptions have been discovered at the end and the center of this promontory. They suggest the presence of a necropolis and a sanctuary to Mitra in the central part of the promontory. In ancient times, this decumanus could have been a property boundary or a communication road, as suggested by the presence of a necropolis. But anyway, it certainly represents a structuring element of the ancient landscapes. This example also allow us to take a look at the phenomenon of long-term transmission of the parcel boundary function. In fact, this decumanus was then perpetuated at the property boundary of the Diocese of Porridge, according to the study of my colleague Gaetano Bencic. Another theme that can be developed from the analysis of the leader data is that of the road networks. Firstly, it is known that the limits of the grid could correspond to ancient communication routes, and the reverse is also true. Some modern roads correspond exactly to the cause of certain axes of the Roman cadastral system. So the third example I'm going to show you is situated in the era of the Roman Santa Marina Roman estate, which is now by a large aristocratic villa and a big figlina, mainly dedicated to the production of oil and forests. Also, it became an imperial property in the first century. Here, several traces of a document have been detected. This series of anomalies can be followed for around three kilometers along the north shore of Cherva Poat, and then along the northern facade of the Figlina. The location of the anomalies on the Roman grid and their morphology Leveled ground in sloping areas, double earth bank or depressions are clues that suggest that this anomaly should be interpreted as a road. Its Roman origin is suggested by its connection with the Figlina and its alignment with a decumanus of the colonial centuriation. One of the hypotheses put forward by my colleague Aitano Bencic is that it leads to a diverticulum of the Via Flavia, the main land artery serving Istria from Trieste via Parentum. This access to the imperial estate illustrates the agronomist's prescription that the large estate should not be directly on the main road, but easily linked to it. Other sections of road, or probable sections of road, have also been detected. The morphology of these structures and their relationship with Roman sites are again the main reason for identifi identifying them as ancient roads. Here is an example from the era around the mouth of the Myrna, probably linked to the Gradina Golash site, a probable villa identified thanks to the material discovered on the surface, such as Imbrex, Tegula, or Enforas. My colleague Gaetano Bencic points out that this villa is the first site met when arriving from the north via the Myrna. And arriving from the west near the river mouth, it is the second site after the villa at Val di Torre. Here, a series of linear structures that can be followed for around 1,700 meters 
starting on the north bank of the Myrna and extending as far as the Gradena Golash site, could therefore be interpreted as communication road. Another example of a possible road has been identified in the Lauren Santa Marina sector, near the documents already mentioned. This could be linked to an existing communication system between the Figlina sites at Lowan and the villa at Chawapoat. Some researchers, such as Francis Tasso and Robert Matiasic, have suggested that Chava and Lohan may have been part of the same estate at one time of their history. And a final example of a possible road identified concerns one of the cardo of the Roman centuryation. A number of small quadrangular structures have been found in the vicinity of the identified cardo. One is related to the east of the Limites and a group of three feather south to the west of the Limites. These structures could correspond to small buildings dedicated to artisanal or agricultural activities, but their presence along one of the cardo of the situation suggests that they may have been burial enclosures. Fragments of charcoal and Roman ceramic materials have also been found near the structures mentioned. And so, to conclude, I have given you a few examples of the preliminary results of a study that is still in its early stages. All the proposed interpretation have yet to be confirmed by field verification, but also archive research and the study of old cartographic documents. The work of detecting anomalies and mapping them must also be complete. But this research on the cadastral system and what network is promising, and a further step will be to make the link with the exploitation of natural resources and the maritime network in order to understand their interconnections. Thank you.